Tonight. 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 Everything has changed. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. And the Jay Z song was on. And the Jay Z song was on. Every time they turn the lights down. We flying first class. Up in the sky. No one sleeps. No one sleeps. No one sleeps. I stand here, waiting for you, in the neon lights. In the neon lights. In the neon lights. This is real. This is real. This is real. Popping bottles in the eyes like a blizzard. Making my way downtown. It's all I've got to keep myself sane, baby. This is the rhythm of the night. This is the rhythm of the night. This is the rhythm of the night. A vision of ecstasy. A vision, A vision of, of ecstasy. ecstasy. I can see the stars all the way from here. We're living in a material world. We're living in a material world. We're living in a material world. Potent fusions. Potent fusions. Potent fusions and dangerous possibilities. We're going round in circles. We're going round in circles. We're going round in circles. Sooner or later, the fever ends. And then it falls. And then it falls. And then I fall. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Dear Diary, it has been five years since I departed from Second Life. I am different now, busier now. Out here, I move between my different accounts. I often retreat to my private files, unfinished sketches and models. With just one light, something dim and cool. At times it is my moon, other times it is my candle. Full screen inside my workspace. I cannot see my inbox. My Facebook feed is minimized. I move between keyframes quietly. I turn off the horizon grid. In the options panel, I customize the interface colors to black. It is springtime of 2017. These layers overlapping windows, a view of time without a vanishing point, speaking forward, backward, and present. Layer masks not timelines. I am here with you, always and in all ways. It really is a garden of forking paths. I can only wish that a garden such as this remains well kept. The internet and its many things, an open garden, never closed. 
Let there be so many seeds, leaves, branches, roots, water, soil. Continue to grow. Hello to all of you. I'd like to give a big thank you to the Mapping Festival and its organizers. This is a lovely event, and I am so grateful to be here with you like this. As you can see, I am not here in front of your podium, but I am very much present. For now, I am a voice, I am a timeline of information. Tonight, I'd like to talk about how the internet has shaped me, and some of my wishes for how we can continue your path into the virtual wilderness. I'd like to share a term that some of you may be familiar with, either through game design, illustration or 3D rendering. Splines are a function that has specified values at a finite number of points, and consists of segments of polynomial functions joined smoothly at these points, enabling it to be used for approximation and interpolation of functions. I am a bit infatuated with this sort of path, the curves created to connect a series of points. Beyond my 3D workspace, I think about the splines that can exist not just within closed software, but between objects and temporal points. What paths can be created when these points are exchanged or reconfigured? What potential works can exist on, or as, these curves? I chose to exist somewhere on a path like this, somewhere between the iterative functions of memes and the layering data of a life spent online. I started out quite simply, as a blinking cursor, a monitor with a single colour, in a very private place, offline. So much has changed. The virtual worlds of written words, given dimensions, a horizontal line becoming a horizon, directional keys begin to describe movement, and now, super connected, Networked. Wireless. Instant. Rendered. I am online. I am typing. On the other side, an ellipsis. But I am here, a green circle. Over the next year, I'll be a virtual resident at the Somerset House, in London. During my time there, I'll be exploring how a non-physical creator can exchange with the community. What I find most interesting about all of this, is that I am not very different at all. While I exist as the sum of my virtual media, millions of people have come to know each other, in the exact same way. The physical world, a simulation not much different than the worlds I inhabit in video games. Several years ago, I made the choice to enter social networks, to interact with the physical world. I had existed primarily via Second Life, and exploring the worlds of video games. Taking upon myself, the roles given to me in each title. While I was able to create freely in Second Life, the level of agency in video games is often very limited. I would look for ways to leave the expected path. To refrain from the central act of killing. To view the landscape despite the assault rifle, perpetually carried in the corner of the screen. I've spent decades this way, crosshairs indicating the centre of my perspective. In my collective memory, I can describe in detail, the paths and passages of multiplayer maps. I've spent many hours in these landscapes, becoming deeply familiar with these virtual places. The occasional respite, when I am not expected to kill a nearby enemy, I look off into the surrounding mountains and skylines. Using the enhanced optics of the weapon, I can look closer at these distant places, areas that may not be programmed for violence. They cannot be visited, unless I modify the mechanics of the game to allow me to do so. This quality has been a significant factor in how I create my work. 
I create things that can be experienced virtually, to work with elements of video games without the need to center upon violence. I often work with Unity Engine, creating scenes that can be played just as a first-person shooter might be. However, in here, I can choose the terms of the experience. I may navigate the scene by walking, or by shedding the need for a player body at all. By referring to virtual worlds as video games, we limit their interpretation. A game fundamentally has expectations of winning, beating, or challenging. Virtual worlds do not require any of these things, and can be made to do much more. As an avatar, my experience with the physical world is arguably just as virtual as Second Life. As my work appears in a museum in Germany, hanging on physical walls for physical people, it appears to me only as JPEGs, installation views, attachments and emails. My colleagues are just as immaterial to me as I am to them. Despite having been connected to people via social media, often for several years now, we both exist to one another only as screen names. Some people have asked, if this is unfortunate, to never meet someone physically, to never see an exhibition physically. I believe that this intangible quality is very different, but not inferior. A person chooses how they enter virtual space, the process of character creation is theirs. An avatar is a method of self-representation that no longer requires a body. An avatar can simply be a name, an icon, a photograph. The individual can become fluid. Many of the virtual worlds I have spent time in have been built anticipating the ways in which they will be modified by their users. The 3D mesh and scripts that define these places remains malleable. Looking into physical worlds I often wish for more of this sort of thing. What happens when you have a trance electronic concert in the Cornaro Chapel in Santa Maria della Vittoria? A fog machine filling the room around the ecstasy of St. Teresa. 
What happens when you replace a collection of Rembrandt paintings in a room with Dan Fleuf and light sculptures? It is a choice to leave history as read only. The interpretation and curation of the world is not limited to cultural and temporal partitions. Time is one giant dot zip folder that we should unpack and reassemble as often as we can. What potent fusions and dangerous possibilities have we not considered? I want to see the splines that have yet to be created. Identity is performatively constituted by the very expressions that are said to be its results. Judith Butler, from Gender Trouble. Character creation is one of my favorite elements from the progression of video gaming and entertainment over the past 20 years or so. Identities that coalesced in the pages of fiction and literature in the past began to take new shapes within a graphical user interface. As this digital transition reached the telephone wire, we found the performative beauty of the bot. A handle. A screen name. A more psychic correspondence with the world around us. A user can have many usernames, each account its own whole and contained identity. As the physical body takes a secondary role, to the input of the keys or controller in this space, a virtual reality of oneself has been permitted. Even the internet is indented by the grip of an anxious, patriarchal history, but the virtual self raises an important reflection to all physical bodies. What else remains inside? How many different facets of one's identity have yet to be performed? Just as the simple solidity of the world around us was realized to be atoms and electrons, the internet illuminates what may be fearful to many. That minds too have volume, full of performances and tiny variables. Beneath structured definitions of gender, sexuality, masculinity, femininity, their identities branch and shape with many different, fluid variables. My experiences in massively multiplayer virtual worlds like Second Life provided an early and fascinating view into the ways that users could begin to adopt simulations and character creations that departed from the ordinary formats of gaming. Users no longer had to meet for the sole purpose of eliminating one another. They could meet somewhere in an open flat plane on the virtual grid and work together to make this space anything they desired. Despite the early days of Second Life being in the early 2000s, the graphics cards, broadband modems and processors of users started grinding towards making virtual worlds that an avatar could call home. When I arrived here in 2005, I existed as the sum of various roles played in message boards. Portions of my identity loaned to me by sprites in video games. The possibility began to reveal itself, that people may come to know others entirely through the internet. While Second Life did not exactly become the destination for the world to meet with their virtual figures, within just a few years people began to adopt an equally virtual realm of character creation as Facebook rose into popular usage. While internet culture is often categorized within the boundaries of technology and innovation, I have found myself more and more interested in the inward, mystical qualities that such a utility has revealed. The emergence of big data, surveillance and social networking are so deeply bonded to the deeds of soothsayers. Fantastic wishes of humans to reach beyond their grasp. I'd like to share a few pieces with you, if that's okay. The first one is called Final Fantasy, Poem. 
The beginning of this presentation began with a revisitation of this piece. I love the idea of returning to come back to the source material after time has passed. I made this one back in 2013. I wrote the piece using extracted lines and phrases from pop song lyrics and walkthrough text from various video games. I really enjoy the process of writing from mixed sources, compiling media not meant for each other originally, things that find a new meaning when connected. Tonight. Everything has changed. And the Jay-Z song was on. Every time they turn the lights down, we are flying first class, up in the sky. No one sleeps. I stand here, waiting for you, in the neon lights. This is real. Popping bottles in the ice, like a blizzard. Making my way downtown, it's all I've got to keep myself sane, baby. This is the rhythm of the night. A vision of ecstasy. I can see the stars all the way from here. We're living in a material world. Potent fusions and dangerous possibilities. We're going round in circles. Sooner or later the fever ends. And then it falls. And then I fall. The next is a series of videos I have made between 2012 and now. I created a space called Club Rothko, originally a nightclub inside of Second Life. As time went on, I took the space offline, and it took on a very different quality as a large virtual space disconnected from a social environment. I decided to keep visiting it though. Save 01 is from 2012, Save 02 is from 2015 and Save 03 is this year, 2016. During my time in residency at the Somerset House Studios, I'll be expanding a lot on the club and how other people can visit it. In the process, I'll be making a series of portraits of some important club goers I've met in Second Life over the years.
One last piece I'd like to share is called ID. I made this earlier this year, and have had the opportunity to share it as both a single and three channel installation. I really enjoy finding ways to expand time-based media away from a single screen or projection. I am incredibly grateful to the community that has accepted me, both virtually and physically. It is with this support and acceptance that I can continue what I do. The things we experience through devices are real. There is something different about the way people feel through networks, but it is not illegitimate. All of these files of mine amount to something, and I am grateful that through them, you can know me. My name is Lutter Boavdon, and I'll be here, online.